Carja, we are very fortunate that a star of stage, screen and radio is here this morning to chair this important event. She is an Irish Republican who never hesitates to declare her allegiance with pride. She has won many awards, including Emmys, Tonys and a Lifetime Achievement Award from the Irish Film and Television Academy in 2012. And she is here today to launch Sinn Féin's 2020 general election bid. So please give a big thank you and warm welcome to our friend, Fanula Flanagan. Yes, Marie, um, thank you very much, Denise. Uh, that was a lovely introduction. And that's not important. What is important is that I'm an Irish Republican, and I'd like, I know this is a room full of Irish Republicans, and people have worked very hard to get to this point. Um, congratulations, Mary Lou, on that amazing video. I'm honoured to chair this launch of Sinn Féin's 2020 election campaign and I welcome the change that Sinn Féin is bringing to politics in Ireland. This is a historic day in Ireland's history. On this day 101 years ago, in this very building, the first Doyle Aaron met for the first time. Indeed, the Mansion House has been the venue for many significant gatherings connected with our struggle for freedom. These walls resonate still with the voices of rebels, of those demanding equality and justice. Voices demanding the emancipation of women, the rights and dignity of workers, and for national independence. The first oil that met here all those years ago included the first woman Yay! Elected to a British Parliament. Elected with the votes of Irish women who had just won the right to vote. Sinn Féin stands for all of Ireland and has representation in all of Ireland. The speaker I introduce now demonstrates that. He is a lawyer, a passionate advocate for those seeking justice. He recently served as a Sinn Féin councillor in Belfast and as mayor of Belfast. And just weeks ago, he was elected as the abs, abs, absten, I can never say this word, abstentionist. Thank you. Hey! Well, it is not my native language. <laughs> Extensionist MP for a constituency in Belfast rega regarded since partition as a unionist stronghold. So congratulations to you, sir. The connection with those who met here 101 years ago is clear. His family name is known worldwide because of the circumstances of his brave father's assassination by British agents in 1989. John has just returned from America after a successful four days of meetings in Washington and New York. His mother and his family have never given up in their fight for the truth of who plotted and directed the assassination of his father, Pat. Please give a warm welcome to the wonderful John Finucane. Maddie Moy, August Falcher Rove, Hig, Chalk and Art Vara, Don Sholu, Teokhan Sinn Fein. It is indeed a big personal pleasure for me as MP for North Belfast to welcome you all here today for what is Sinn Féin's candidate launch for the election called for February 8th. If the date itself is anything to go by, then I think we're off to a good start. For I'm told it's the first general election to be held on a Saturday since the first oil was established, as we've heard, right here 101 years ago. A truly historic election for our party and our country. That moment in history defined our country for the years to come, in both the short term and the long term. And make no mistake about it, this election 
takes place in times that will once again define our country for years to come. We live in historic times. We live in defining times. We are a generation of Irish Republicans who are closer now than any generation past in achieving the unity of our country and helping to create a new Ireland. One that for the first time in our history would deliver on the promise of our proclamation to cherish all of the children of the nation equally. Because this is what we are about. This is what this election is about. This is why we are the only party that speaks with the weight and credibility, with the freshness, whether it's dealing with our health crisis, our housing crisis, tackling financial scandal, the pension age, infrastructural inequality, or resourcing our public services. We offer a real alternative, a credible vision that doesn't just take on the status quo in our society, but confines it to history for the benefit of everyone equally. It is the credibility of our vision, of our team of candidates gathered here today, and the work that they do, day in, day out, across the country, that has the establishment worried, that has the establishment tell us it can't be done. In North Belfast last month, we returned the first Republican MP in the history of the jurisdiction. <laughs> we made history. We did. Republicans from all over Ireland ensured that our message was heard on the doors, in the sports clubs, in the workplaces all over the constituency. Ours was a positive message of standing up and rejecting Brexit, of showing our vision for a better future. A future where we celebrate our diversity, not fear, a unified future. That message that we worked to deliver made sure that we were told for generations was impossible was in fact just the opposite. We haven't just ended the Unionist hold on one constituency, we have ended the Unionist majority in the North forever. And I say that... I say that not out of a triumphalist jubilation, but from recognising the challenge that lies ahead for Republicans in creating a new society, a new Ireland where all identities are treated with respect. We are on the cusp of that change as the conversation spreads and gathers pace and we must lead on it. This is why I am proud to be a Sinn Féin elected representative for the area that I grew up in. This is why I am proud to be part of the only All-Ireland party that follows up its words with actions. We are part of our communities, we care about their futures and we want to deliver real change in people's lives. For, no, for make no mistake about where we are today, we are a party with the right leadership, the right candidates and the activists with an activism that is the envy of all other parties on this island. This is the challenge that we must now all meet head on, for we have an election to fight and an election to win in less than three weeks. This won't just happen by itself, this happens through the only thing that we know which is getting out there, delivering our message and working hard in our stubborn refusal to be told what can and can't be done in our communities. We have a track record in making history, so let's go and do exactly that on February 8th. Thank you.